China's real-life squid game is revealed, and the Chinese Communist Party is terrified. Welcome to John Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. Squid Game is one of the most popular shows in the world right now. It's a Korean drama about people trapped in debt, invited to play a series of games for cash. Except it turns out the games are deadly. Think Hunger Games, or Battle Royale, or Working Girl. And Squid Game is insanely popular in China. Even though Netflix is banned, the Chinese streaming giant Yoku has even been accused of making their own knockoff Squid Game TV show, which I think is unfair. Sure, there's some passing similarities between the design for Squid Game and their new game show, Squid Victory, but I'm sure that's just a coincidence. Anyway, the Chinese Communist Party is not happy about the success of Squid Game. You see, Korean dramas are very popular in China. The party hates this. The party wants everyone to be watching Chinese shows and movies, like The Battle at Lake Changjin, a Chinese Communist Party propaganda film. It was literally commissioned by the party's propaganda department. The movie is about Chinese soldiers defeating American soldiers during the Korean War. Wait, does that make it a Korean drama? Anyway, Chinese officials are so insecure about Korean dramas that top party officials have devoted time to debating why China can't make a soap opera as good as South Korea's. One official said, it is more than just a Korean soap opera. It hurts our cultural dignity. Wang Chi Shan, the guy who was leading Xi Jinping's anti-corruption campaign, had a different approach. He tried to spin the success of Korean dramas as a victory for Chinese culture. Wang said, the core and soul of the Korean opera is a distillation of traditional Chinese culture. It just propagates traditional Chinese culture in the form of a TV drama. Hey, if you can't beat them, claim them. Korean pop culture has been part of Chinese culture since ancient times. That didn't really solve the problem, though. For a while, China even banned all Korean music and entertainment. So the success of Squid Game is like a recurring nightmare for the Chinese Communist Party. But Squid Game is different from other successful Korean dramas. Because China is running its very own real-life Squid Game. And it's terrified of the world finding out. More after the break. Welcome back. The Chinese Communist Party doesn't like the success of any Korean drama in China. But Squid Game is different, because it touches on one of China's most closely guarded secrets, forced organ harvesting. Minor spoilers for Squid Game. Sorry, I can't actually show you the scene because YouTube would freak out if I did. So there's a side plot where some people running the show harvest the organs of players that are killed, and they sell the organs to Chinese buyers. The writers of Squid Game knew what they were talking about, because China does in fact kill prisoners of conscience to harvest their organs. Some of the more than one and a half million detainees in Chinese prison camps are being killed for their organs to serve a booming transplant trade that is worth some one billion dollars a year. That was the finding of the China Tribunal in 2019. It was an independent people's tribunal led by Sir Jeffrey Nice, the same guy who prosecuted former dictator of Yugoslavia, Slobodan Milosevic, at the International Criminal Court. And when the tribunal says these are people in prison camps, they're not talking about people who are in prison for committing crimes. They're talking about people who are in prison for their religious beliefs or their ethnicity. The primary victims are Falun Gong practitioners. Falun Gong is a Chinese spiritual practice the Communist Party has been persecuting since 1999. More recently, ethnic Uyghurs are becoming a major source of organs. Tibetans and House Christians have also been victims of China's organ harvesting. Now to be clear, when you hear organ harvesting, we're talking about people who are killed specifically for their organs. 
And it's not some back alley black market thing. It's being done in state-run hospitals sanctioned by the Chinese Communist Party. You see, in most of the world, to get an organ, you need to be put on a waiting list that can take years because you're essentially waiting for a compatible person to die naturally or from an accident. In China, you can schedule a transplant. That is not possible unless you're scheduling someone to die. Organs have a very short shelf life, sometimes just a few hours. Of course, the Chinese Communist Party is covering this up. Just a week before the Netflix hit Squid Game was released, Beijing furiously denied the existence of a state-sponsored organ harvesting program. Unfortunately, the UN and the World Health Organization are basically powerless to stop China's organ harvesting because of the control China has over those organizations. Squid Game isn't the first to comment on organ harvesting in China. In the book World War Z, the zombie apocalypse begins because of Chinese organ harvesting. Of course, that plotline was cut from World War Z the movie since Hollywood wanted it to get shown in the China market so they could harvest the profits. Joke's on Hollywood, though, since the government never allowed their movie in China. And now it's time for me to answer a question from a member of the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army, a viewer who supports our channel on the crowdfunding website Patreon and Locals. Grimoire Weiss asks on Patreon, Considering Jiang Zemin's age, remarkable for a frog, what will happen to his faction once he passes away? Will this be the final victory for Xi, or will he still have other powerful enemies to face? That's a very good question. Yes, it is remarkable that former Chinese leader and humanoid toad Jiang Zemin is still alive at 95. He's the one basically responsible for the persecution of Falun Gong and organ harvesting. And if you've been watching the show, you know he leads a political faction locked in a life-or-death power struggle with current Chinese leader Xi Jinping. Now, Jiang's faction is basically tied together by shared crimes against humanity, specifically the persecution of Falun Gong and organ harvesting. That's how they all rose to power. Even if Jiang were to die, his entire faction is still tied together by those crimes. They cannot afford to let their crimes be exposed, especially by Xi Jinping, who would use what they did for his own political advantage. So Jiang's people will still fight for power after he dies. That's why this is a life or death power struggle. There's no way for either side to back down. Thanks for your question and your support. And thank you to everyone else who supports China Uncensored. You can either do it on the subscription platform Locals or on the crowdfunding platform Patreon. The links to both of those are below. You get different perks with each, so be sure to check them out. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching China Uncensored.